it's Friday. It is. I don't care what time it is in the Netherlands. I don't care if it's Saturday there. I'm not concerned about <laughs> other times or anything. And, you know, and I know the world revolves around GMT. But, you know, Fort Collins, Colorado is the center of the world. Well, and we have, How the, long we have, have the atomic We do clock. have the atomic <laughs> clock. It's right up north of town. But independent of that, Fort Collins, Colorado is the secret center of the planet. I've said it our entire marriage. She never used to believe me. And then she started seeing it too. Well, yeah, and now I live here. Yeah, but you're like reading through the news and be like, I, what? <laughs> and uh, I'm like, well, what do you want? And remember, honey, Fort Collins, Colorado is built at the spiritual center of modern America. Disneyland. Seriously, Disneyland, old Main, Main Street USA or old whatever the hell. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Literally was based on our old town because the guy who designed it for Disney was from here. And so if one wants to talk about the secular religion of Disney, we, <laughs> Fort Collins, were built right into the middle of it. Yeah. No escape. Nope. Uh, oh, wrist check. Let's do wrist check. Okay, wrist check. I am... We're getting fancy with this background. Yeah, isn't this, isn't this lovely? This is a... My, my extended family have a lot of, like, Japanese antique stuff. And this is a, this is this little wooden tea tray. Uh, if anybody can translate the maker stamp, that would be super cool. I've, I've asked many times over the years and never got an answer. Anyway, like it's 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 old, and my granddad used it for his, his contacts, for his eyes. And then nobody wanted it. They were going to donate it to the thrift store. I had to take it out of the donate pile. Well. Okay, well, let's do risk. Go for it, lady. Do, do you want to stand over here? No, I'm fine. This is a 6105-8009 proof, which is, in theory, it's a... A, it's a proof proof. Wait, no, no, no. Is it the resistor the proof? Yes, the American 6009 proof proof is the rarest one of these. Uh, I used to think it was the 6009 resist, but somebody told me it wasn't. Anyway, this is a birth year, birth month. Watch for me. And this is the first 6105 movement I ever serviced. Wow. There it is. And I am wearing... Wow, that was so surprising. Yeah, I know. There, there you go. This is the this is the 005, and it's it's beautiful. It's definitely grown on me. The fact that it's visually tighter, it just makes it look very Seiko to me. The other watch is a lot bigger and wider, but I really do like this. Between that, the sort of functionality of it, and the fact that the GMT bezel can vanish depending on where you're looking at, I just, I love it. I love it. Okay, that's it. Sir, we got distracted with cat drama. We were just doing wrist check. They didn't know that we left for a while. Well, no, they don't, but I mean, cat, <laughs> cat drama happens. The cat sleeping, that's the drama. That is the drama, because it's always very interesting to see. Oh, she's annoyed that we're talking about her. She's shifting around on, our, on her new tuffet. All right, let's go for it. Okay. Uh, from Demitz22, loved your excitement in the video. I got the same two as well. Love the Mikan. Mikan. Can someone tell me how to pronounce that? I, I think it would be M-I-K-N. M-I-K-A-N. M-I-K-A-N. Right. The Mi orange. Mikan? Mikan? I'll say Mikan. It wouldn't be Mikan. What, I can't go like full-blown American? Mikan. That Make orange. I got, the, or my brother-in-law could never say Seiko. He would always go, Saiko? Saiko? Sa Seika? Seiko? Se and I'd be like, Seiko. Seiko. Who? Seiko. Uh, Rick. I think he was just messing with me. <laughs> Saiko? I'm like... <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, God, I never finished reading the question. <laughs> Um, Batman on a Jubilee is a Batgirl. Uh -huh. I would show you the blue one, but folks, it's in pieces over there. Why am I saying it's in pieces over there? Because I recorded a live stream of me ripping it to pieces. Uh, I'm going to download those to YouTube and you can see it too. Yeah. 
upload them. Upload, download, reload, side load, hand load, <laughs> wide load. I'm not going to mention any more words with phrases with the word load in it. <laughs> um, Sabrina, the two tones on the bezel signify AM and PM. I did not know that. You didn't? Well, wow. well, you see, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. So anyway, just to recap what Demons22 was saying, he was saying, you folks, you're, you're saying that the 003 is, 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 is a Batman because it's Batman colors, but it is on a Jubilee. Demons claims, maybe he's just being silly, but he claims that you're in... You're paranoid that everybody's being silly. Maybe he's being... You know, the problem is I'm a really credulous person because I trust people and I assume people... Uh, aren't liars. So I'm, I've been relentlessly taken advantage of my whole life. Uh, when, uh, anyway, but the Batman isn't a Batman, it's a Batgirl, which means everybody can wear it, not just her. <laughs> um, Maxi Cycle, I am a lady with a five and a half inch wrist and love wearing my Black Seiko 5 GMT. Sabrina can totally rock it if she wanted to. I'm all for paperless manuals since it doesn't take up space and becomes clutter in the future. Thanks for a great review. Enjoyed listening to the both of you discuss. Mm-hmm. Did I tell you what I found? Remember, because you were talking about the crystal being higher, mm -hmm. higher top like this, because it, it looks more like a, like a high top, like an old school crystal, like how a 6309 was up, which creates this little void space and it preserves the and it preserves the the insert from getting scratched uh so that was a nice little thing and i was thinking it was just kind of a throwback element but when i ripped the blue one apart mm -hmm. it's they literally they have a the the chapter ring is taller or there's more room inside but anyway i think the size is fine mm -hmm. if you just want to have a boat anchor attached to your wrist that's such a great watch i know Phil, it's <coughs> big yeah um are they the same? Actually, they're pretty comparable in size. Look at that. They're really, I mean, they're obviously a slightly different layout. And this one has well, a... Well, they can't see it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, here, why don't you just take it off? Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, it's, they, they did just see it during the wrist yeah, check. Yeah, because we totally have We totally that. have filmed the wrist <laughs> check already. Uh, let's see. Let's get this one off. Okay, so this is Sabrina's... Okay, this is Sabrina's 6105 slim case. It's June 1968. We get these things right next to each other. They are really, truly of comparable size. And she wears this one all the time. The watch. There you go. Thank you. Or do you want to try the orange on? Well, that one's going to be... Oh, no, just to see what it looks like on your wrist. Oh, wait. I, it's not that big on you, honey. I'm going to have to unlatch it. <gasps> Oh, gosh, I'm hungry. My tummy's growling. I gave you an apple. What do you think? It looks fine. It looks upside down. Oh, well, it is upside down. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> uh, okay, well, did you have any response to that? Um, yeah, no, I know. I can, I can wear. I wear whatever I want. I tend to not really like small watches. What's the size of my 6105? Oh, that's as small as I'll go. That's like 36. But like you had your little lady swatch and that thing, I'd yeah. be surprised if that was 24 millimeters. Yeah, I, I don't like small watches. But yeah. that said, I don't want to have a grandfather tuna or something. <laughs> That'd be funny. That would be funny, but I might break my wrist. Might. Well, the thing is, we actually have a grandfather tuna coming. In theory, if this all works out, then I'll finally own my own, my own 6159 grandfather tuna again. My own. It's very rare for me to make a serious effort to get back a watch that I've sold that was mine. This one, I'm going to do it. Onward and upward. Um, Mike Kingsborough. What a waste of money for the SSK uh, 003. Okay. Th uh, this, um, th these is are... Is that the three? No, this is the five. The three is the blue black. Is the blueberry. Um... They're a fantastic value for money. I have to say, this is one of the nicest quality um, new Seikos I have seen since. Uh, He's uh, looking for 
something. It's one of the nicest quality new Seikos I have seen uh, since the release of this one. I'm trying to remember the model number of this one. This was a short-lived release. Came out in like, uh, oh, what's the date on this one? In any case, this thing, what, can't see. Everybody, I can't see, everybody was excited about this one. They thought this watch was going to be the, a barn burner, and it is a beautiful watch. S-A-A something. Beautiful fit and finish, gorgeous. I, myself, personally have not seen a brand new Seiko with this level of quality and production until this one. For this price point, this is ex pretty much, as much as I complain about Seiko, I have to say that in this instance, with these watches, they appear to have listened. Um, their casework has always been superlative. This is no different. I love that word. Superlative? Yes. It's, yeah, it's a mellifluv, is it mellifluvian? Or is it, well, it's certainly, it, it's, it's pleasant to say there's a description for that. A word that is, it's, it's, um, I'm, I'm a little <laughs> stuck. Any case. Ah! You okay there, yeah. lady? No, that's mine. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the quality is excellent. Uh, this, I mean, the rotating ring with a, with a hard lex insert and, and dual reflectiveness to have that thing. It's beautiful loom. Uh, the dial loom is flat. It's got, it's, you know, well, I'll have to answer that question another time, but the bracelet, the new created bracelet for these watches, as I have said and certainly will say again, Seiko was certainly watching, certainly talking to the community because this bracelet is great. Basically, this watch to me looks like Seiko was wanting what, basically reading what people were wanting. They wanted something. I think the only way they effed up is that the crown seal is not screwed down or even a better crown. Did I... I don't, it's just not. Well, I, In any case, it's a huge value for money. This thing is going to be, uh, in my opinion, is going to be is going to be a, a long time. It's going to be a keeper. This is like, it's a it's a nice watch. I just wish it had a screw down crown, but I could be wrong. I was wrong about this one. We'll see. Uh, Jim Peden Peden. Thank you, Spencer and Ms. Klein, for a very in-depth review unboxing. You have revealed a lot of nuances on the GMTs, and after this, I bet if I get one, I won't need a manual. I really like the blue SSK003. The bracelet is nice to be solid, but the uh, unidirectional bezel. I am with you on the screw-down crown, but I also am not a fan of the glass case back. I'm sometimes rough on my watches and do dive with them. They are uh, classy cool mechanisms and dressy tools. The black and blue bezel is also a nice touch. I mm -hmm. am watching for part two. Yeah, well, there's, uh, like I said, I made a couple live streams ripping them apart, um, doing a review, looking at all the numbers that they produced, and then I did a follow-up video with all of those numbers that gave us a lot of info. Uh, both watches, by the way, ended up with right around 48 hours runtime power reserve. They are both, even between each other missing in terms of accuracy, neither watch exceeded, oh, I, I think four or three, oh no, six to ten seconds a day loss. Um, but yeah, they're, yeah. Wait, that's one I just yeah, read. that's right. It's the, the only failure, in my opinion, is the screw-down crown. If they had gotten the screw-down crown, I can talk a lot more about the crown because I made more discoveries last night, but I'm not, I'm not dealing with that now. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Beanboy89, I got the SSK001 last week, really impressed by it. Love the bezel and how the slightest change in light can totally change how it looks. I think Seiko has a home run in these watches. I do too. I, I, as you all know, I, I have a strong bias against a lot of the things that Seiko has been doing recently. And I absolutely was pretty certain that these were going to feel like sort of a chintzy, ill-considered fashion watch. 
But except for the crown, every decision they made makes sense. And I'm in love with the fact, I really am, that they resurrected a central piece of technology that they got from the old SUA 5619s. The, the middle, the, the, the wheel. The, everybody's like, well, how does, that, how does that hand work, that 24-hour hand? It's literally, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-part component with a clicker ratchet on the inside. I've only ever seen it on the 5619s, and I have to give Seiko tons of credit for doing that. And, I, I, you know, I'm going like this, I'm like, maybe one of them likes my video. <laughs> maybe they saw my big video on the 5619. And I, because in that video, I did state many times, I'm like, man, if somebody made a modern version of the same thing, that'd be awesome. I don't think that actually happened, but I could take credit for it. Yeah, go nuts. Seiko would have to deny it to prove me wrong. And then you would get more publicity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Uh, Connor Whitworth, great content. Still prefer the old Shielded 5 logo. It has such charm, and damn, they look so good on the 60s Sportsmatic styles and case backs. If I had to decide, I'd go with the orange, but like you guys, the OG SKXs remain the true icons. Not a fan of a push down crown on any watch that's gonna go near water, but anyhow, great content and opinions. Well, thank you. Um, my personal, my personal guess is that all things considered in terms of color and size and apparent proportions and all that kind of stuff, I bet you the orange is going to be the one that, that a lot of people really get. And it's got this beautiful, like, the color orange is the same as Orange Crush, which was this soda I loved. And growing up as a Colorado uh, person and being a Denver Broncos fan, this orange is exactly the same as um, as Bronco Bronco orange Bronco stretchy pants. They look just like that. That's what it looks like, man. And actually, huh? Actually, honey, the colors and dial. It's also you could call it kind of a creamsicle. Yeah. Creamsicle. There you go. Don't want to call it McCann. Call it creamsicle. Because blueberry and creamsicle, right? They're they're both foods, right? So is the, the, the orange, the mandarin orange. Well, like, yeah, but I mean, who eats oranges? You. Every day. <laughs> okay, let's go. Ella Bay forever. They are pretty enough, but without a screw-down crown, they just feel like imposters to me. Where's Sadie? She would run in the room at random and go, imposters among us! Anyway. <laughs> I can text her? Oh, wait, she's not here. Nope. <laughs> If oh, I, you know what I could do is I could have her record a clip of her screaming that and then insert it. I'm going to do it. Anyway, go on. <laughs> She's at friends' houses. I just have to text her. That's the great thing about the modern age. Yes. Yeah, you see, it's always, it rings always like three minutes fast, but it knows what time it is. It just rings early. What? What? Uh, where was I? I don't know. Oh, imposters. Mm. If I really wanted a dive type Seiko GMT on my wrist, the SUN Kinetic Diver would be my choice. If I could put this movement in my empty SUN 045 case, it would be the best of both worlds. And it's black and gold, Spencer. Yeah, they are. It's cool. I, I love the SUNs. I just happen to have mine here. I mean, there's so much about the SUNs I love, and I agree with you. They're cool. Seiko tried to do something new here, but it was like half-baked. Uh, and honestly, I just don't like Seiko's movement kinetic technology. I just simply don't. The fact that I'm, I'm always having to worry about the charge, it just bugs the heck out of me. My wish always with these SUNs is that they were like 15% smaller and mechanical. Or even just a, a decent quality, you know, quartz, but man, mechanical and about 15% smaller. So instead of that big, it's like that big. And you would get proportions, actually, because um, if we do, damn it, if we do forced perspective, you can see what this would look like if they were the same size. It'd be a damn good looking watch. I wish. Close. Close. But no sashimi. 
You ready? Sure. Rock on. In the pre-world. Uh, Alex R. It'd be pretty rad if they had a loomed GMT bezels as well. Have you peeped uh, the upcoming Citizen Promaster Mechanical Diver? Mm -mm. I'm digging the case and dial design, but I am not crazy about the Mercedes Hour Hand. The Fugus? We're also at Great Return to Fame too. Pause. One moment, please. And we're back. Did I ever? Where I have I? no idea. Uh, I don't know anything. I just work oh, right. here. Oh, Okay. Did you answer that? Uh, the only thing I said, no. Um, they're not loomed. The bezels are not loomed at all. Uh, they didn't even put a pip in them, which I can see why. They have that, they have the hard lex top. They could have put a pip underneath it, though. That's what they did. Um... The grandfather tunas uh, are like that if memory serves. They could have loomed underneath um, and then just had the hard lex on top of it. That would have been fine. But as we see, Seiko is still having its QC problems with pip alignment. Um, you, as, you know, despite, you know, the defenders out there saying, dude, or in one guy's case, bro, <laughs> Actually, that's like, if you want to annoy me, you want to make sure that you uh, you instantly put my hackles up, call me bro. Anyway. What What are you going to do when Sadie walks in and calls you bro? Are every, you going to be like... No, every time she does, I'm like... I say bro. <laughs> it's just... You I, like Rick and Morty. I don't know, man. Freaking... I know, but they're, they're using it ironically. Everybody does. And I'm sorry, you're old. Now people say bro instead of dude. I mean, it, they'll still say dude, but not as much. Bro is evolving into dude. Even you're going to be a no, curmudgeonly no, no. old man with a cane being like... Ah! Even dude, I bristle at. Uh, I, will, I will accept it from people I know, but that level of familiarity, especially over the internet, they don't know who I am. Wow. I, you know, I don't, you know, I'm old enough to say, I want a little bit of respect in certain things. Don't call me bro. Hell, back in San Francisco days, that was a quarter of a century ago, I was like, don't call me dude. Don't you remember? No. I, I told her, I tell her, that when we got married, that part of the deal was that all my memories were also hers, but she just won't access them. Anyway, let's go on. <laughs> Where, uh, and I... We just got done with the GMTs. Okay. Um, Forbin Colossus at 808 um love that second hand with the lollipop correct word on the correct end dial is the color of mountain dew spencer i'm curious if the difference in water depth 100 meters versus 200 meters has other quality issues besides screwed down crown um well the thing is whenever you have an opening into a case it's oh, it's another opening and so when you have when you have a display case back, like this one here, you have introduced not just one opening because of the glass, uh, but actually two. You have two surfaces in here and water can get around either side. So you're introducing a large surface area where, which greatly increases the surface area where something can fail. And so that's where that comes with. And so they drop the they drop the resistance for that. I'd be real surprised though. I've never, granted sake, I hasn't been making them for, you know, I've been making them what, since the 90s, late 90s? I, but I've never seen one leak. I've never seen one fail. Never, I haven't. So I would put that to one side. However, crown gaskets, that's where almost all the failures almost always are. Way back to the beginning, the crowns fail, crown seals fail. Um, I remember somebody taking a 7548, which, uh, a, a diver, uh, and they were like, okay, it's only 150 meters to dive with. And they were like, because it's not a screw down crystal, like the, the just half generation later, the 7548 7010s, which had a screw down crystal. Um, they're kind of rare, but somebody took their 
Uh, it was a 6309 Tiger, not a 7548, exact same technology. But it, it, it got took down to, somebody went diving with them, they took it to 250, 250 meters? Like it went down really far, far deeper than it should have. It had been rebuilt, it had all new seals. But at the time, the discussion was, well, the only difference between this one and the, oh, that's what it was. The only difference between this one and this 7549 tuna, which has a screw down ring and 300 meters, um, was uh, the only thing was, is, was the crystal difference. That was it. And so um, they, they assumed that the ratings were low. That said, I would not trust this crown and this 100 meter watch to do much of anything. It's it's bad enough. It's not a screw down crown, but the fact that the the case the 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 crown seal itself is tiny that makes me nervous. Wouldn't that sort of make it into a fashion watch because Kinda. it's built for to look like it has a purpose when quite obviously it does not have that ability. Well, I mean, uh -huh. a lot of what oh, I'm holding it. Um, this is, uh, well, I mean, this is one of Seiko's very first, first of the 70 meter sport divers. I actually have the last, the, the last one too. That orange 7006 diver, 70 meters. If you think about 70 meters, <clears throat> that's real deep. It's a lot deeper than I've ever gone scuba diving, which was probably about 25 feet. Um, so, I mean, there's a niche for that, that they haven't filled for a long time, that kind of you know, surfing and stuff. Um, but I wouldn't trust this thing surfing one good hit with a good wave and that could get pulled out. So I don't know. I mean, it's kind of an imposter. I'm, I'm still a little unclear why they deleted of all things, the screw down crown. That seems like it's a real mark of just basic usability to have that. So that not being there puts it on the level of like a very fancy dress watch but it's still beautiful and it's still resistant. Um, if anybody has any pressure testing data, I'd love to see it. If I had a dry tester, I'd run it up as high as it would go and see if I could do that. But what are you gonna do? Hi. Hi. So what's the deal? Uh, I'm hungry. Oh God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> uh, Steven Rand, uh, Spencer, great video. Any comment on the Cyclops, positive or negative thoughts? He likes them because he has bad eyes. I, I used to think they were just really kind of trashy and weird looking. Um, just because I always saw them on thrift store watches. You know, junk watches that people would get rid of and they were trying to look fancy like it was a Rolex so they put a Cyclops on it. So I associated it with junky watches and I did right up until I got my first Rolex sub. And I and at the, by that point, which wasn't that long ago, my eyes were worse and I couldn't read it. So it actually has great utility for me. It's functional. I use it all the time. It doesn't bug me. It has a thing. I, I can certainly see where people would want to try to pull it off. I don't know. I'm going to be ripping apart the blue case. And I can look at what it looks like with a standard crystal or flat one. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I like them because I like bubbly things. Yeah, it's just nice. It's just for me because I need it and I use it and it's functional. It doesn't bother me at all because it's there for a reason. It's, there's a purpose. Nathan Barnes. Hey, uh, Spencer and Sabrina. Thank you for getting every weekend off to a great start with Mail Call. I faithfully watch every week. Thank you, and sorry. <laughs> I would like advice from both of you with respect to a 1988 birth year Seiko. I have a nice variety of modern and vintage Seikos, as well as a Grand Seiko Snowflake. I have always wanted a birth year watch and have looked for a number of years, however, I cannot decide. Can you suggest any references dated 1988 bonus if it's July 88 that I should consider? Thank you so much for your advice and time. 80, it's kind of a funky year. It's kind of a, it's the, it's the, it's the twilight of SUA production. Like it's basically it's ending, it's over. <clears throat> but 88, you still have some good stuff. Very tail end of the seven A's. Especially you, um, the the RAF 7828s, uh, 81, whatever the heck they are, 
those I've seen made all the way up to dated 91. Um, but they made, they made a lot of the 7As up to 88. Uh, another good possibility is the first gen 7C43s uh, and 7C46s, because those began being produced in 1986. I mean, like cool ones, like you get the JDM 7C46, the ashtray. I forget the, the, the second part of the reference, but they had an American version in stainless steel, which was stainless steel and gold. And then they had the Japanese version, which was all black and white, titanium. Every time I think about that watch, how light it would be in just black and white, I don't, I don't go on Yahoo Japan every time I think about that watch. But those are, those are good options. You know, 88, it, I mean, it's real early, but I mean, first gen 7002s, they're going up in value like crazy. They're going up in value and up and up and up and up and up. So that's definitely something to think of. And the movement quality on those was still excellent, especially when they first came out. Um, those are the ones that I would think of. There's got to be a lot more. I know that there are no catalogs, unfortunately, scanned online. There's sort of this gap between like 1986 and 1990. Oh. But what you can do, look at the 90, look at the 90s ones and extrapolate backwards and see if you can take this or that model number and put in the year 1988, 7C43, 7000, which would be their golden tuna. See if you can find one anywhere. So it's possible. You're just going to have to dig and dig and dig and dig and do it consistently and set up recurring searches and eventually you, you're going to find something. Hi. Hi. So what's the deal? What, I mean, what's the dilly? Yo. Bro. Bra. Oh. Sus. <laughs> whatever you young kids are talking about. Oh, right. <laughs> Uh, Super Cruise. Hey, Spencer just picked up my Seiko 5 GMT Batman SSK003 from my local authorized dealer. Batgirl. I don't know if that's true. Well, I like it. Fit and finish are excellent. Folks have already knocked the clasp, but the bracelet overall is very solid and well finished. The clasp? The clasp is identical to everything Seiko's been producing... Yeah, since the early 2000s, it's just, a, it's a fold-over locking clasp. I've never had a problem with it. I, maybe I'm missing something. Could you let me know? The bezel treatment with the hard lex insert makes the black and blue colors look almost like liquid metal. Yeah, you can see the color shift. Note this, see how it's shiny there and it's black here? And as I move, it goes back to silver. It's the reflectiveness. It's very cool. I've never seen it in any other watch. What did my brain just say? Uh, With what the, I just read. Oh, I, my my brain said, I like toaster strudels. I, but I don't know if you do like toaster strudels. When I was a kid, I did. Hmm. Anyway, my brain said, liquid metal. Liquid metal. <laughs> Polymetallic alloy. Liquid metal. And it forms stabbing shapes. Wait, how's that quote go? Smashing, crushing, stabbing? No complex mechanism. Uh, now I have to watch Terminator 2 again. It's on, I think, HBO. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Love it. Saw uh, that in the theater. Man, what a summer that was. Anyway, <laughs> very unique and mesmerizing. Um, I fully wound the 4R34 and threw it up on my time grapher. Initial amplitude was showing between 272 to 285 and running straight at plus 3 to 4 seconds per day. The only disappointment in my mind was the beat error was 0.8 to 1 on my particular watch, which may be perfectly acceptable as a mass-produced timepiece. My OCD kicked in, and I cracked the watch open and dialed in the BE to 0, 0.0 with timing at plus four to five seconds per day, and now I am happy. Seiko has a winner on their hands with the new GMTs. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Both of mine. I'm going to... I have the... I have two videos. One is sort of a follow-up video um, where I, I put the watches through like five days of different tests. but um, And then the blue one gave me numbers that were a little poorer. Um, 
after all of that. Initially, those were better, but then after the running period, the orange got better and the blue got slightly worse. Um, blue is running in the 260s, uh, 270s for winding spike. The orange, this one, was running in the 270s, 280s, 290s in the winding spike. Um, has a little more beat error, but it gave me about an hour, 20 minutes more reserve. Um, both of them had beat error. The orange is like 1.0, 1.1. The blue is like 0.8 originally when I started out, but then after the test, it too went up to 1, 1.1. So I have the blue in pieces. I'm, I have to still rip down the, the uh, movement and I want to fully disassemble the case. And uh, when I do that and when I put it back together, I'm going to make sure that thing is at zero. Two. Zero two? Zero as well. Hang on. Is that a really trippy chameleon? I don't know. I just started drawing all like lines and then it turned. No, no it's like it's like a psychedelic <laughs> chameleon, psychedelic chameleon octopus hybrid. Maybe, honey, maybe that's what ammonites look like if if they forgot their shell at home. <laughs> maybe. Uh, James Duffy. One of my first Grail watches was the Seiko SDGC-013 Yoda to commemorate the 35th anniversary of Star Wars. I believe it was JDM and limited to only 600 pieces. If I can find a near NOS example, I would be tempted to spend stupid money for it. I, I, I didn't uh, know what the watch was. I went and looked it up. This is black and white, but just imagine it being like, um, lime green, um, Mountain Dew green. Is that a new color? Like, are people going to I don't know. Saying? Is that thing Mountain Dew colored? No. All right. Anyway, there's the watch. Just imagine that as sort of sort of a Kermit colored watch. And it's pretty. Um, it's it's a fine watch. Um, it's a day-day complication, so it's not... It just has some funky dials for the day-day. I've never seen one. A lot would depend on the size. <clears throat> watch nut. I have one identical to your 6309, same buttery loom from March 1977. Damn it, I left it upstairs. I only just yesterday bought another 6309 7040 from Germany made in February 1977. I really love the buttery loom on the 77s. Yeah, uh, let me. I'm going to stop this and insert a picture that I took recently of my own watch because uh, it's upstairs. Hang on. Alrighty then. Um, <clears throat> wait a second. I stopped that for a reason. What was to it? go get some watch or your picture? Oh no, I was inserting a picture. That was the thing. We started talking about another thing. Okay, so this is kind of Seiko 101 stuff, but whatever. The 6309 divers and the 6159s and the 6306s. 6306s were started being produced in 1976 along with the grandfather tunas, the 6159-7010s. Both of those watches came from the factory with where the loom on the dial is like this sort of, literally this like lovely butter color. Um, but the hand loom on them is white every single time. It's, 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 if you see those combinations in the watch's original, even if you see just a picture of the front, you can say, that's probably a, 77, unless it's a 6159 or really early 6306. Um, that carried on for the 6309s and the 6306s because they were using ba the same dial with like one number different. They were produced at the same time by the same machines, I'm sure. But those, and because those, the loom is screen printed on those, so they're making this stuff up in big batches. Anyway. The loom is this lovely patina tan, and the hand loom is white. Um, 6309, 6306s, they did this all the way through 77. You see it sometimes into 78, but then the watches, <coughs> the loom matches up in color, and, you know, dead stock, it's just white, white, that's it. But you see one with that tan loom and the, the white hand loom, it's great, and it's not patina on the dial. They came out of the factory like that. 
I had a 6159-7019, the quite rare North American 9 version of the Grandfather Tuna. Uh, mine was exquisite and something like only 3% were the 9s versus the 0s. And it had, that one had, it had very, very few miles on it. Uh, and But the loom was yellow. Or that lovely tan. Hmm. Just something to look for. Ella Bay Forever. As a metal detectorist, I can tell you matchbox cars ring up on a detector loud as hell. You can be detecting in the middle of nowhere and find them. Never underestimate the ability of small boys and girls to distribute and bury these treasures. I, I, that's, a, that's an interesting idea, getting well, a, a, a metal detector. I've wanted a metal detector since I was like six. I, Mom could have given us that one, but she was going to be a hoarder. I mean, Dad bought it. She wouldn't let him use it. Then he died. And then it was just rotting in the garage. And she's like, no, you can't have that. I'm like, you've never used it. Every single time Dad pulled it out, which was like twice that I ever saw, she'd yell at him and he went and put it back. The only time I ever saw him try to use it was him and Sadie, when she was little, trying on the beach and finding a bajillion nails. <laughs> I bet you that I bet you that thing is still out there in the garage, still collecting dust. I'd like to have one. How expensive are they? What do I know? I don't know anything. Mihai Pascu. Hi, Spencer. Question for next mail call. What do you think about the ETA 251 quartz chrono movement? Oh, yeah. Seems very well built, all metal, fully serviceable. Also, I serviced my first ETA yesterday at 28362. You can really feel it is made to tighter specifications compared to Seiko 7000 series as you put all the parts back they require just a bit more effort to fit into their hole <laughs> did you experience the pain? you know yeah it's a little bit more difficult but the payoff is worth it <laughs> um yeah no etas are a little bit more tightly built 7000 series they run really well and seiko's generally run not only well but even as they start getting really worn you know, or not cleaned or abused, they'll continue to run. And that is, I believe, only I believe is my theory, nobody said this, that because they're built a little more loosely, they get, they'll keep running for longer because they're not gonna, nothing's gonna bind up or less likely to. ETA stuff is good. I looked at that ETA chronograph movement you're talking about, the quartz chronograph. Yeah, there's like 27 joules, which obviously beats out the 7A. Apparently it's all metal. Um, they're still being made. I could get just the movement. I don't, I didn't find a single watch model that had them that I would have considered buying. They were kind of gaudy. But if you have a model that you think is cool, please send it to me. What? Huh? What? Oops. Ivan Mejia. Hi, Spencer. I have a question for mail call. I recently bought a monster first-gen SKX781 NOS from my local Seiko boutique. It's from early 2006, according to the serial, so luckily it has a 7S26A movement, which I've heard you've said is better than the BC variants. My question is, since the watch is NOS from 2006 and it was probably in a Seiko warehouse for 16 years, should I worry servicing it sooner than if it were a recently made Seiko? I answered you. It's a good question. Yeah, I've never heard yeah. that question. No, it's, it's a great question. Um, it, it should be serviced. Um, and you would think sitting around, people often write me, they were like, hey, I bought a watch from you, you know, nine years ago or something, and it was serviced then. Is it still good? And, you know, I want, and I haven't worn it at all. It's been sitting in my watch box. I recently, like really recently, a couple weeks ago, I opened up a, a watch that I myself had serviced like four years ago. And I was looking at it, and I was looking under the capsules and the diathic setting. And there definitely was lubrication there, but I could see that it was reduced. And it too, this watch really hadn't spent a whole lot of time on a wrist. So just sitting there in the watch box, the volatile elements and the lubrication, which keeps everything, you know, moving, had outgassed and escaped. So a watch that old is going to be in physical perfect condition, but there will be no lubricant inside there. And if you wear it, it's going to run great for a while, and then it'll 
pretty quickly you'll start seeing the numbers drop off. Um, long time ago, uh, some guy found a new old stock 6139 box and tags and papers what and everything. This? Oh God, this is a long time ago. I was still when I was in Sebastian's oh, room. Wow. Long time ago. And he, uh, he wrote me, he's like, should I have this thing serviced? And I was like, I gave him the spiel. And he's like, no, no, man, that's too much money. And then like a month and a half goes by and he writes me and he says, hey man, my watch isn't running anymore. And I'm like, and? and he's like, uh, I, I, I thought I could just wear it and it'd be fine. And I was like, no, I told you it's service it. And at that point, way back then, I never turned down a job. And so the guy sent it in. And I remember opening it up and it was basically perfect inside, except any of the metal bushings and the pinions that went in them had under real high magnification, you could see where it had actually, the metal had worn away. And as a result, uh, um, there, it actually, the movement had some fairly serious wear, but especially the mainspring barrel and the mainspring arbor, the guy was active. And in a month and a half or so, he managed to get, because the watch had no hours on it. It was, it, it was beautiful. But within a month and a half, he was able to put enough wear on a completely unlubricated watch, especially the mainspring arbor, that the mainspring arbor ate itself totally crooked and sideways and ground into the plate to the point that the barrel stopped. So yes, please service it. Mm, handle time. Hi, Spencer, for your next mail call. What are your thoughts on collecting several lower price Seikos, or would it be wiser to save up for a better quality piece such as Grand Seiko, Omega, etc.? Are you in the less is more having a few high priced watches camp or having several lower priced watches? Uh, I'm the, absolutely the wrong person to ask. What's the, what was your last count? I don't remember. In any case, I have, I have expensive watches and I have inexpensive watches. Some of the Many of the inexpensive watches I love a lot more than the expensive ones. An inexpensive watch serviced in you know good condition currently, and if it was a good quality initially, they're perfectly fine watches. It's a matter of it's a matter of what you really really want. Um, don't collect like I do, uh, which was to say I really want this thing, this big expensive thing, but that's too much money or whatever. So I would get one that was. Yeah, mostly correct. I was never satisfied. Even in terms of not quite even the right condition, even that wasn't enough, even if it was the right model. Um, I found that it was a lot more expensive to do it my way, which is buying successive examples to you work up to the thing you should have bought from the get-go. Don't be like me. Figure out what watch... Really be honest with yourself. I mean, if there's models of watches and they're inexpensive and you love them, buy them and wear them. But if you're trying to buy an inexpensive watch because you really want the expensive watch, I would suggest just saving your pennies. When you have enough money saved up, buy the one you want because then that is you, you will be happier that way. Because for me, wearing a watch that isn't a watch, brand that I actually wanted, it just kind of looks like it doesn't do anything for me. That's because I'm shallow and I'm a name brand snob um, for reasons you wouldn't suspect. Okay. Like, it has to do with my ADHD. Wow. There you go. Speaking of ADHD, I finished my picture. But wait a second, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a, an ammonite, though it might look like the ammonite after it got, you know, <laughs> stepped on by a plesiosaur. Like no, that's like <clears> the <throat> ammonite and it's running away from monsters. It's going, ah! No, I think this this is the one ammonite after it got eaten and then dropped to the bottom and then some millions of years went by and then it got stamped flat by volcanism and it's just panicking because there's no room. Anything else? What? Yeah, one more. Oh, one more. Uh, uh... Mauro Gomez. Hi, Sabrina and Spencer. I just discovered the Seiko Dolce line with high accuracy quartz movements, 5E31 and 8J41. What's your opinion about it? I'm looking for a good and durable three-hand quartz, but maybe some vintage pieces will, with service will be stronger. Um, Dolce is the higher end line. Um, I, I had a Dolce which uh, it's really, really annoying because the movement was complete.
completely destroyed. Major water ingress, it was roasted. Um, and I was never able to find even a slightly compatible movement to put in there. But it's like the case, it was a bracelet watch. Case and the bracelet were integrated. It was a beautiful sort of mesh bracelet, but the whole case and bracelet were made of tungsten. Really cool. It was from the, you know, thinner watches or, or better American psycho era of dress. It was really cool. They're nice quality. Um, these other two movements you're talking about, I'm not really familiar with them. I guess the thing is, what's more important to you? Having an accurate and durable three-hand quartz or having something like the Dolce in that level of quality. I'm sure the quality is going to be fantastic in a, Dolce, in a Dolce. I don't know how much they go for. Seiko produced so many three-hand quartz watches back in the 1970s, early 70s, where the quality is just mind-blowing. I'm ripping apart a seven... Uh, what the heck is that thing? Uh, hang on. Uh, where is it? Um, where'd the case pack go? I don't know. In any what is it like uh, the 083? Yeah, something like 0843. Thank you. See? 0834 or 43? 0843. It's an early Seiko quartz movement. They go for almost nothing. But I mean, they're amazing watches. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been in one. Um, but I was looking at it, like the main sections of, of the gear train is. In, built into the middle of the movement, it's a separate module. You pull the whole thing out so you don't have to disassemble it, and it's got two diafix settings on top of the stepper motor. I was looking and I'm like, this thing is an astonishing piece of technology. And it was um, all metal. It has a variable trimmer. Um, the It looked to me, if I had to, I don't remember if the circuit was, if that was early enough that it was hand soldered. But you get the earlier ones, like the 3003s, or even the 2002s, but 3003s and the 4004 service, they will run forever. They're beautifully made. And you can get it for cheap. So if you like 70s styling, that's the way to go. Whee. That's it. Oh, okay, that's all. Folks, it's Friday. You know, I didn't know it was Friday. I was doing the Friday questions, and I thought today was Thursday. She comes by, and she's like, well, do you want me to, you know, get ready for the video? And I was like, we're, oh, no, no, uh, honey, uh, this isn't for this. We're not making the video today. I'm just trying to get ahead of it. And she's like, it's Friday. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's not. It's Thursday. She's like, no, it's Friday. And she pointed at my computer, and I was like, oh, my God. Anyway, that's it. Um, so look for the more of the GMT videos I have I have a video where I lay out all the numbers, and then I have a follow-up part of that video where I start ripping the watch down. And I just have to find a way to port those over from Instagram. Um, and that's about it. Anything to add? No. What? Hotter than the devil. Well, yeah, but we have air conditioning. We do have air conditioning. It's true. <laughs> I'm not saying that to be like, ha ha British people. I'm just saying we are fortunate to have air conditioning. Yeah, here it's a thing, so it is what it is. I'm, I'm grateful to have it. Okay, folks, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep your questions coming. We're continuing to, you know, move forward, and even when we know that it's not Friday, it is, and we'll be ready. Wow. Okay, bye. Is it going? I think so. Tell, yes. tell the people. I'm eating an apple. Don't mind me. Oh, he just pulled that watch out and said lots of people like it. And I said, it, it's the bumblebee. I, I declare it the bumblebee. Okay. So you heard it from the lady. Go out and spread the gospel. <laughs> the bumblebee. All right. Bye.